Welcome back to Fishing Planet. First off, thank you guys so much for all the awesome support from yesterday's video. It really means a lot to me. I mean, I love fishing in real life, but I've never actually really played a fishing game that much. I have played like once or twice, but that's about it. Anyways, I took a lot of the uh, suggestions that you guys put in the comments and decided to use some of them. So right now, we actually decided to get a bigger bobber, then we got some small cut bait, and we have a little bit bigger of a hook. So we're gonna try and catch some bigger catfish with this rod. And for our other rod, not that one, for this other rod, our uh, casting rod, we decided to get a little bit bigger of a minnow. Now we have a two inch shad instead of a one inch shad. So I'm hoping we can catch a bigger fish, whether it's bigger catfish or bigger bass. In real life, I love fishing smallmouth bass and this is the lure that I use. Well, not exactly, but it's pretty much exactly. It's just a rubber zoom jerk minnow. Um, I don't actually use a, uh, a jig that has a weight on it. It's just a, a J hook. But the cool part about the J hook that I have is I have it to where the hook just barely comes through the rubber part. So it kind of like sets flush on the edge of the uh, rubber minnow. That way I can cast right over the top of lily pads, grass, weeds. I can even throw it up in a tree and I won't get snagged. All I have to do is crank it up really close and then just give it a little flick and it drops right off. One time, the craziest thing ever happened, I cast over the top of this little branch, just barely hit the branch, and it went right down to the bottom, and once I started reeling it up, the minnow was just dangling on the water, a huge bass came up and just slammed it. So the crazy part is I actually did catch the fish, but we had to go over, um, lift the, the line up over the top of the branch in order to catch the bass. And it was a nice like 16 inch smallmouth. So yeah, let's actually get out here and try and catch some fish. So it's pretty early in the morning now. And I think first we're going to see if we can't catch ourselves a nice cat. We're going to throw it out there as far as we can, kind of off towards this tree and see how we can do. Well, that was a pretty good ways out there. All right, we're finally getting some action here. I don't know if he's actually gonna take it down. Okay, that's good enough for me. We got a fish on. Fish on. Should be a cat. I don't see what else is gonna hit this. Look at the size of our bobber. So I figured out a way to make it bigger. But, oh, nice cat, 13 inch, one pound catfish, not a bad way to start off the morning. So I've never actually used a bobber before for catfishing, probably because where I fish, there's a 30 foot hole on the river and it's a little bit too deep for bobber. I mean, not only that, the current is so strong there that it, good luck trying to stay in one spot. Your bobber's gonna be floating all over the place. I think bobber fishing is more for like ponds or calm places. But yeah, usually what we use is a Wolf River rig and we have like a eight to 10 inch leader down there on the bottom. So a Wolf River rig is just like uh, a swivel. Well, it's, it's a three way swivel. One goes directly to your rod, the line that goes to your rod and the other one goes to a sinker. And then the next one is gonna go to your hook. So we have probably like a eight inch leader that goes to the sinker. And then I would usually have like a 12, 13 inch leader that goes to the hook where we would always have a treble hook and either shiner or night car or cut bait, something like that. And the way that we actually would know if we had a bite or not is my grandpa had these really old rods. They were kind of like bass rods and they had 33 Zepcos on them and really old like bait caster reels. Um, so basically we would have the drag set really, really low or some of his reels were so old that we actually would set the clicker on them. So basically, there, if you reel forward, it could spool backwards too. And nowadays, most reels don't really have that anymore, I don't think. But yeah, these reels would have clickers on them. So you could just sit there, wait, you know, talk to each other, and all of a sudden you hear a zzzz, and then the rod will slowly start bending over, and you know you got a bite. Come on, fish. Here we go, here we go. Just barely touched it, but there's definitely something there. Wow. I mean, he barely touched it. He He's there. 
He is definitely there. Reel up a little bit of the slack. Hopefully we don't reel it too much. Man, he is just barely messing with it. What I like to do to see if they're actually still there, turn sideways like this and just barely bump your bobber a little bit. And a lot of times if it shows motion like that, it tells the fish that the bait is still there and, and uh, well, basically it's, <laughs> it's more appetizing to the fish, fish on. <sighs> that, that thing just slammed it. He took it right down. <gasps> Oh, this should be a good one. That's a nice fish. Really cool. Let's get him in. There it is. Another one pound catfish, 13 inch. Nice. So, I don't really know if they get too much bigger around here. I mean, I'm sure they do, but for the time being, I'm pretty happy with that. I love how realistic it is too. The fact that they just barely start nibbling on it. And sometimes that can last for almost five minutes. Like I've seen rods where they just barely tip, the tip of the rod just barely twitches. And five minutes later, it's you think it's gone. And next thing you know, the whole rod just bends over. It's about to go into the river. So you never know. And that is pretty awesome. So this is actually gonna be the first time we're gonna be casting out this new two inch shad. I'm really looking forward to seeing what we catch. I think guys, we're probably not going to get as much action. Oh, me, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I was literally just thinking we might not get as much action with this, uh, this big shad here, but we got a fish already. I mean, hopefully it's a decent one. We'll see. And you don't really have to keep your tip up. You can hold it to the side as long as you keep pressure on it. I think you're good with that. Wow. Here we go. Thirteen point two incher. Wow. Fights a lot harder than I thought. The cool part about these minnows is you could either work them on the bottom or right up towards the top of the water. And it kind of depends on what time of year it is, especially in real life. Say when the skipjacks come out, which it's basically like a baby northern. The bass love those. So anyways, those are always on top of the water and they like to jump out of the water. During that time of the year, what I like to do is keep my, uh, I call it a jerk minnow. I put it right on top of the water. So I kind of use it as like a, as a spook, I guess. So when it's not skipjack season, like say early fall or late summer, then I'll hold it right down on the bottom and kind of work it like a jig, like a tube jig almost, right down on the bottom. They like it down there sometimes. So a lot of times you don't even feel the tension. You don't feel like your line tightening up or anything. You'll just see a boil. And when you see the boil, you set the hook because that means the fish opened his mouth and he has the bait. Cast number 16,576. Hopefully we'll get a bite this time. I don't know if we're, oh, there we go. That worked out pretty good. <laughs> this time I didn't really twitch it as much and he hit it pretty fast. See what I like about this versus say like fishing sim I don't know, I'm sure there probably is a way that you could do this, but the little fish icon that indicates whether you get a bite or not, I mean, that just would drive me crazy. It does drive me crazy. Uh, like I said, I'm sure there's a way that you can turn that off. I mean, I would hope so. But yeah, I like the fact that you can actually just see your line in the water and you don't really know what else is going on out there. You can't see the fish or anything because in real life you can't see the fish unless it jumps out of the water or until you get it within like five feet away from your boat. Sometimes you literally can't see it until it gets into the dip net, depending on how dark or clear the water is. All right, looks like we're about to get them tired out here. Here we go. How'd we do? 
Ah, another 13 incher, 13.2 and a one pound bass. Man, that 13 incher fought like crazy. I can't even imagine what a 15 incher is gonna feel like. I mean, honestly, I think my biggest bass on Fishing Planet is a 15 incher, but I must have gotten lucky to get that thing in or something. So yeah, I think we were actually twitching it too much last time. This time we're not gonna twitch it too much. We're just gonna kind of reel it every so often, stop and then twitch it and see what happens. Either that or we ended up landing right on top of fish. Another fish on. I didn't even see that one coming. See, that was the cool part too. Like you really need to pay attention to your uh, fish meter over here on the right side, whether or not you do get a bite. If you don't, or if you just feel tension, it's kind of cool too, but you don't have anything telling you, oh, you got a fish bite. All you can do is see the tension and that's pretty much it. Not only that, it's off to the side too. And you don't really have to pay attention to it. I'm pretty sure that you can take, oh, pretty sure you can turn that off. Yeah, you can. That's pretty cool. So you can actually turn it off completely, then have the most realistic feeling. So once I get good enough, then I'll just keep it off completely and make it more natural feeling. But right now, kind of hard to tell. I mean, you can kind of hear the drag, but you can't tell like how much pressure is on the line. Although I don't think this fish is too big. Don't get any lily pads. There we go. How do we do? 12.5. So yeah, not quite as big as our other bass, but not bad. Keep twitching it too much. It's just a habit. There we go. There we go. That is a pretty good one. I think that's our biggest one yet. 13.7 and 1.5 pounds. Okay, so what I wanna do now is, so that kind of scared the crap out of me, but it looks like we hit level 11. We're gonna get one coin and 1500 cash, and we can also get some jigs. Nice. But what I wanna do now is leave and go cash out basically. I want to get this rod holder, so I want to be able to uh, cast out and hold one rod there for catfish while fishing for bass at the same time. I think we can do that, I just don't know how to. Alright guys, welcome back. We just got the rod holder stand thing, so let's uh, press 7. Suppose, wait, it literally just said, did it say 7 or 9? Maybe it was 9. Oh, look at that. I want to put them right here. Right there. Perfect. Now I want to cast this right out there. There we go. Put that back in there and wait for the magic to happen. I honestly can't say that I've ever fished for bass with spoons before. So I don't know if it's gonna work out too well, but we'll see. All right guys, so it looks like something is definitely messing with our bobber over there. Take a look at that, it's moving pretty hard. What I wanna do is switch over to that rod so we can get ready and hopefully not miss another catfish. Okay, so let's do this. Don't do anything, just pick it up. Don't move it. Oh, we got a fish on. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I uh, was expecting to wait a little bit, but he was already pulling back, so I guess we got him. <laughs> Can't really do much about that now. Very cool. I love the bobber, it's just giant. <laughs> it's like we have a buoy out there for a bobber. All right, let's get him in. There we go, 14 incher, 1.5 pounds, a new personal best channel cap fish. That is what I'm talking about right there. Man, 
He didn't even take the bobber down or nothing. He was just on. So cool. There it is. <laughs> this guy hit it right at the last second. Nice blue go, eight incher. So I kind of want to move this. I think we're a little bit too far to the right this time. Maybe we need to be more to the left. Because we're not getting any hits here. Yeah, we'll try over there. That should be about where we want to be. Oh, we're getting a hit already. It literally barely touched the water. Oh, we're getting a hit. Look at this. Wow. There it is! I can't believe how fast he hit. So all it was is we needed to cast in the right spot. And he was there. How do we do? Another really nice catfish. 13.7 inches and 1.2 pounds. Boy, we're getting pretty good at these catfish. Yep, first cast. Nice fish on, just like that. So it's all about the time, apparently. It's our first bass we had on in quite some time now. Been catching a lot of bluegill, white crappie. All right, how do we do? There we go, another 13 incher and 100 cash. I'll take that. You want to cast point right at that patch of grass right there at about three quarters speed right at that exact cut right there perfect now honestly we probably don't even need to set it down because this look look this spot is so good i'm telling you you don't even need to put in the rod holder here it's just it's just like it's just money pretty much that's just money just wait till he goes down oh, there we go once the bobber starts going crazy like that you know he's on so you can pretty much just set the hook oh this one's got some fight to it here. Wow. That is a nice one. 14.5 inches. I could tell he was going to be a little bigger. 14.5 inches and 1.5 pounds. So he's pretty much like the same size as our biggest personal best catfish. Very happy with him. So 14.5 inches and 1.5 pounds. We'll get 41 cash for that. And I think that's actually going to be a good way to end this video. Overall, we had a pretty good trip. I think we ended up with like six different cats, a couple nice bass. And we figured out a way to use this rod holder pretty efficiently. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. I can't wait to get out there and try and catch some walleye.